This is the GMAT 41's Support Student Education Initiative Program. You are welcome to our mathematics class for senior secondary school students. In this video, we are going to look at the topic, the concept of numbers and place values. Of course, you know in the study of mathematics, what we deal with majorly are numbers. Alright? We play around with numbers to solve basic human problems. Well, we're going to start with our very first objective, the concept of numbers. And it might interest you to know that there are two broad concepts of numbers. One of the type of number we have is real numbers. Real numbers. All right? And then, of course, we have the imaginary numbers. The real numbers we use are to represent them. And of course, imaginary numbers we use I to represent them. You can see them on the board there, okay? This symbol and this symbol. So, what are the subsets of real numbers? Right, but first, it's important for us to know the meaning of subset. When you hear subset, all right, it, it simply means part of. Okay, so we want to find out the numbers that make up real numbers, right? Those numbers that form part of real numbers. Now we know what subset means. We want to look at the various subsets of real numbers. And here on the board, we have these subsets. So are you ready to learn about them? Okay, so let us go. We have that which we call natural numbers, and we use N to represent natural numbers. Capital letter N, that's uppercase. Examples of natural numbers are our counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you move on, alright? The next are integers. Integers are also a subset of natural numbers, so we use Z to represent integers. We have positive and negative integers. Of course, you can see the symbol I used there, Z plus on top, that is positive integers, and then Z minus, which represents negative integers. Examples of integers, we have them here on the board. Negative numbers and positive numbers that look like natural numbers. Zero is also inclusive. Now, this is the idea of integers, okay? You pick your natural numbers. I just give examples of natural numbers. Then, you introduce negative to them. So you have the positive side and the negative side. Then zero inclusive. So zero is an integer. Take notes, not a natural number. And that is why we cannot say that zero is positive we cannot say that zero is negative because it is part of a number that contains both positive and what negative whereby the zero uh, demarcates okay a kind of divide this positive and uh, the negative side so take note once again zero is not a positive number and it is not what a negative number the next subset of real numbers are rational numbers and what are our rational numbers we have this rational number here on the bar the symbol we use for that is q now natural numbers they are fractions that have exact values what do we mean by fractions that have exact values some of them we refer to, to, to them as terminating decimals. There are others we call recurring decimals. Now, if I give you such fractions and I said, okay, you should find their values, you will notice that some of them will be recurring, others will be terminating decimal. Examples of such numbers that are rational numbers, we have 1 over 2. If you evaluate 1 over 2, you're going to get 0 0.5. So it, it terminates at that 0.5. No other number continues it, okay? Then we have 2 over 5. If you evaluate 2 over 5, you're going to get 0 0.4. You see that it terminated at that 0.4. It didn't continue. What about 10 over 9? Evaluate 10 over 9, and you would see that you would get 
one, 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 it continues. So it's a recurring decimal. Is that okay? And now what about one over three? Evaluate that you get 0 0.33333 and some other examples. All right, let us now look at another subset of real numbers. This time around, this subset we refer to it as irrational numbers. Irrational numbers. We use Q prime to represent irrational numbers. And what are irrational numbers? See, so there are these fractions that when you evaluate them, the way the value would be would be quite scattered. It will give you a definite pattern. It will not have a, an exact value. Are you getting me right? Such fractions, they fall under irrational numbers. Example of such fraction is 1 over 7. You can find that out. You notice that the format of the decimal is not arranged. It's not terminating. It doesn't stop at a particular point. And it, did not, it will not show a particular pattern of recurrence. All right. Sort are also irrational numbers. Sort. You know we're going to study sort in the course of this program in mathematics. Root 2, root 7, root 6. What are sodic number even? Sodic number are simply square root of non-perfect square numbers. Square root of what? Non-perfect square numbers. You know, we have numbers we call perfect squares, like 4, like 9, 16, 25. If we take the square root of such number, we don't refer to them as sorts because they will give you whole numbers. They will give you natural numbers as value. For example, square root of 4 will give you 2. Square root of, of 9 will give you 3. I hope you're following, right? So those ones are not sorts. But if I give you square root of non-perfect numbers, numbers that are not perfect squared, just like I have example square root of 2, square root of 7, square root of 6, these numbers, they fall under irrational numbers. So we refer to them as sordic numbers. We're going to study them when we treat sorts. Pi is also an irrational number. Pi is a constant. Is that okay? It's a constant. If you evaluate pi, you are going to get 3.142 something, the number continues. Of course, you know that pi in the study of measuration, measuration, we use pi to be equal to 22 over 7. Or if you to use the decimal, we usually use 3.142. That is not the exact value of pi. If you press in your calculator, you will notice that the value continues, okay? We only use an approximate value. And the arrangement of that decimal is not in a particular format of arrangement. It's scattered. I hope you're following what I'm saying, okay? That's why we refer to it as an irrational number. Another one is exponential. We use E to represent it, okay? Exponential. You have that key in your calculator so you can search for it. E. Exponential. It's also an irrational number. If you press exponential 1, for example, you would get 2.71 something. So it continues in that order, very scattered. Okay, so the decimal does not have a particular pattern. And sometimes to make someone understand it, I, I call it a, a scattered decimal. Okay, <laughs> scattered decimal. So all these uh, are examples of uh, irrational number. We use Q prime to represent it. Now, we've known the subsets of real numbers. Please, I want you to take note of the following things on the board here. Okay, that real numbers, it's simply natural number union, integer union, rational number union, irrational number. You know, the concept of union, we study it under set. We'll meet all this when we discuss set theory. Then, take note that natural number is a proper subset of integers. I take that again. Natural numbers, n, is a proper subset of integers. What do we mean by that? What do we mean by saying that natural number is a proper subset of integers? It simply means that natural number, the form part of integers, and of course that's what we can really observe here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They are part of these integers, alright? Natural number is simply the positive 
part of integers. So you could say that natural number forms part of integers. We said they are proper subsets because natural numbers form part of integers. But integers, all right, do not give you natural numbers. Because in natural numbers, we don't have negative values. But in integers, we have a negative values.